Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. G'day, hey, game, Phil Tarrant, the host of the Smart Property Investment Show. Been doing this for a while now. Probably one of the great jobs in property in Australia, some would argue. Means that uh, I don't actually have to get my hands dirty. Uh, all I really need to do is chat to people who work in and around property, but also invest in property. And uh, what a great um, way to educate myself uh, around property. People always go, oh, Phil, you know, how do you keep so informed and know so much about stuff that most people wouldn't know about? Uh, it's because I host lots of conversations like this uh, with people who know what they're talking about. So for me, it's a great way to learn, great way for me to shape um, my views and my perception and perspective on certain things uh, allows me to challenge, to question, uh, to debate, um, which I'm quite comfortable doing uh, as long as uh, it's based on play the ball, not the man. Um, That's what we do on the Smart Property Investment Show and elsewhere. So this is the fifth instalment of our special series of the Fast 50, uh, the report we do every single year. Where to put your money today for the best capital growth in the year ahead. We do it in partnership with our friends over at Pure Property Investment, the buyer's agent, C, and the buyer's agent, still the principal primary major, I don't know what he calls himself these days, buyer's agent, Paul Glossop. He's the CEO and founder of the place. The major. The major. <laughs> <laughs> you, you still call yourself a buyer's agent or you're too too important these days? You Far just sit on, it, you just sit on podcasts just talking a, about I'm just a lowly buyer's agent just trying to figure out where and what to buy to get my clients the best outcome. Struggling buyer's agent. That is it, mate. Just day in, day out, trying to figure it out. And one postcode at a time. One postcode at a time out of the 10,000 plus suburbs. We're just trying to disseminate and figure out where are we, should we, are we buying. Okay. You get it largely right, don't you? I think so. I think we've sort of uh, we've unpacked that a bit in this um, this Fast Fifty Report podcast series, mate. Is that I think yeah. we've got it right more often than not. Well, I do all the work for everyone in Australia around property. Right. No one needs to do anything. You don't need a buyer's agent anymore. Just honest Phil Tarrant and his Fast Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it starts. And if you don't want to buy property, he's got a few vacuums for <laughs> yeah. you as well. <laughs> got some encyclopedias if anyone needs it. Steak knives. Steak knives. The what do they sell door to door these days? <sighs> Mate, Electricity be, plants, they don't even do that I don't anymore. Want, I don't want to bag out, but I see a lot of charities knocking on the door. Yeah. With their, Chuggers. Oh, is that what they are? Charity muggers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're called. <laughs> That's uh, actually never heard of that before. Never. No. Never. So like when you, know, when you go to the shopping centre and there's someone there trying to sell you, yeah. I don't know. And it, look, it's a lot of really good work. Then people don't do this. It's cool. I don't I, want to I've actually don't want to, props to them because I look at anyone who's prepared to put themselves out there and do that kind of work as yeah. much as I don't agree with what they're trying to flog. Um, mm. I'll tell you what, it's a certainly a... Uh, Certainly a tough and and I, th- I think probably sets a lot of people up for sales careers if they're able oh, to do that. Absolutely. That, that speaks a lot to how and where they're prepared to yeah. put themselves. But and potentially, as long as they're doing ethically, that's the challenge sometimes. Uh, well, yeah, that's absolutely right. And there, there was some a lot of four corners, I can't remember who did it, some big reports uh, a couple of years ago around around the sort of the dynamics of um, charity fundraising. And mm. they're just like a lot of these places, just boiler room sales houses, um, um, uh, that are highly incentivized for selling yeah. subscription-based charity stuff. And uh, you know, by, by no means am I dismissing the very important work of a lot of charities, but the point being there are so many charities out there these days all with different um, uh, objectives and they need to raise funds in some capacity. So that's one gateway available to them. Yep. Um, but uh, I, I think they stand there waiting for QF2 uh, to, come in, to come in from London and they uh, – Put a sign up and says "Wanted English there, salespeople." There is a fair few English yeah. Northerners who do seem to find themselves there first and foremost. They do. Well, they're on. either there or they're in property sales somewhere yeah. or other, <laughs> <laughs> talking about some of the the suburbs that didn't make the Fast Fifty report, yep. but are still good. Still good. Still good. I, I actually um uh I, I try and avoid it, and for some reason my social media feeds think I I am interested in property related stuff. Right. Uh, so I get all the the sponsored posts coming in from all the different buyers agents and all this sort of stuff. There's one in particular. Uh, and this is important, has a point. Uh, I won't I won't um uh, she, it's a female, she's been around for a long time. A lot of people value her opinions. Um, but pretty much pointing to some major concerns she has around Spruiking property salespeople mm. selling um, off the plan developments, mm. uh, pretty much saying you know they're they're not property investors, and this is connected in with this whole notion yep. of, of of charity sales. You know they're they're just 
out there trying to sell off the plan apartments or, or it wasn't off plan apartments, it was house and land packages, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, house and land packages and just saying that might be cool for owner occupiers, but if they're selling you on the basis of, of it as, a, as investable yeah. stock, just be quite weary about it. Yeah. And um, I don't always agree with this particular person's um, uh, investment strategy, but I, I thought she made a fair and valid point. Yeah, and uh, mate, you and I both have had our time and tenure sitting on the board of the Property Investment Professionals of Australia, and we talked about this off and on for for years and years and mm. years. And um, you know, we're, we're we've we've personally both probably witnessed, and you probably more so than I feel, is that my vocation as a investment property buyers agent was was I was one of you know maybe a few dozen a decade ago. These days, I, you know, I couldn't even tell you what, where the count is. And, mm. and I guess the point that I'm trying to make with this is that when we sat on the board of, of Pippa, big part of what we did and what I spent a lot of time doing was trying to understand, you know, A, how do you educate potential buyers, agents, mortgage brokers, people who are going to work in that finance industry to try and make sure that they are not only providing accurate and correct advice, but are also playing between the goalposts that they're legally allowed to play in. And this is the challenge when anyone is going to be speaking to someone who's proposing or spruiking or potentially going to be advising on a particular investment vehicle as a property, whether it's off the plan, established apartment, house and land, um, ultimately the, the regulation is minimal and this is the challenge. So I guess that there's some pretty simple things, which if anyone is thinking about simple questions that you can always ask that person who's on the other side of the line, on the other side of the phone, if they're, they're proposing or asking or assuming that you really are the person to buy a house land package, ask them what they've bought, ask them performance, ask them how long they've been in this game for and ask them how they're paid. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's the key point and, and it's very much the, the point she was making yeah. is, you know, someone's got to make someone. Somewhere. Yeah. Now, now um, it's house and land packages are, 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 are an important building block of the property economy. If any, right now, if there was ever a time, they yeah, are, and yeah. it's going to explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is cool, and and this happened. This is pro yeah. properties getting developed, yeah. right? Um, the the difference is the the properties that I traditionally buy were once upon a time, maybe a house and land package. <laughs> they, they were, were they were new, right? They so were. so at a point in time, that's what it was. Um, as a property investor, is this where I should be deploying my money today in these type mm. of assets? Now the point being, well. If they're building a thousand new houses in a greenfield site anywhere in Australia, how are they any different, and why are they investable right now? Is the point. So, um, what you need to do as a property investor is ensure that you're deploying your money to get the best benefits today and into the future. Now, mm. the thesis of the the Fast Fifty report is where to put your money today for the best capital growth in 2025. As in, where do you deploy your dough now? Yep. For capital uplift in any, but that's not looking at that in isolation going, that's it, they need to worry about. This is, these are the suburbs also that have the long-term potencies for long-term um, exploitation of average annual gains. Yep. And and some suburbs are always going to outperform the norm. And, yep. and we went through uh, the last time we got together yesterday, um, some the, the average 10-year average annual growth for the past 50 was about 11%. No, no. Uh, no, that was that was a twelve month growth. Tw the twelve ten month growth. Ten year growth, I think, was was circa four point, might have been four point eight percent. Average annual growth was correct. Yeah, but but I guess with your point there, Phil, was that quite interesting? And this goes back to the weighting. We also talked about the fact that more than fifty percent of these suburbs are in WA, and then you dug deeper to say, well, actually, in WA, the average annual growth over the last ten years was in the twos. It's pretty slim. Was in the twos. So again, we're sort of talking about the fact that it is not a linear line to capital growth over a 10-year or 20-year or 30-year period. It is certainly going to be, hey, timing this is, is going to be quite vital and quite important. But when you get in and what you get into is going to be extremely important to how that sets you up, both good and bad in the future. But I think to your point, mate, you were talking about, you know, off the plan in particular is probably trying to figure out how is someone incentivized to give you that advice. Yeah, yeah. So make sure you, you, you're you using the right people around. The A team you put around you to make more informed investment decisions. And if you're unsure, don't do it. Ask, yeah. ask a friend. But uh, the Fast Future Report, so, and we've gone through how we got to it. Um, we, we started off about 140 suburbs yep. recommended by our, our panel of experts uh, and very, very diverse. Um, so the, the Fast 50 was where we landed by... Um, synthesizing all that information recommendations with an overlay to data and we got to the past 50. But there's still the rest, 90 other suburbs, um, which didn't make the list, which made the short list. And many of them 
a, a very good location. So I just want to spend some time today, Paul. Yeah. Having a, having a chat with you around it, and and I deliberately, as you can see on on my spreadsheet, everyone here, the names of the people who recommend it, I don't have them, so yep. I don't know. So I, I do. have you you do okay. <laughs> so, so but I, I won't don't divulge. <laughs> yeah, but so I have no bias over this, right? Yep. So I'm just looking the purely. Um, Purely at the uh, at the numbers on on the base of this, and yep. I look at number one hundred and forty. Yep, uh, is Flemington in Victoria three hundred three one. Now, yep. um, I look at some of those stats there. Uh, Fifty one properties sold, so it just made the mark uh, in um, you know over fifty to be considered mm. as part of the list. Now, the average price is over a million bucks, right? Yep. So it gives you a sense of the suburb. It's probably a middle of the road suburb for um. For Victoria, average sorry that the quarterly growth on it negative two point eight percent. The um, uh, ten what is it the average the ten year growth I'm looking at the top of this so average annual growth which is what it's grown at the last ten years right mm. is five point two percent. Its annual growth, as in how it's changed, negative twenty one percent. Yeah. So 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 obviously this recommendation is. This has grown. This has grown the last ten years at five percent. So it's probably performing as you would expect in the market. Yep. You could probably buy today at a discount of twenty one percent on what people were buying at the same time last year. And, and I think, to, and no doubt, that's probably where they've landed with this. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a couple of key things there which probably excluded this market from making the report. First one you mentioned there, Phil, was that the turnover as far as the average annual sales or the annual sales was was fifty. It's it's a pretty low number in Flemington. Um, you know, near Flemington Racecourse there in, in, in Melbourne is a, is a relatively small market, but it's um, quite an affluent market, mm. but it's also highly dominated by apartments. So we're talking, again, this is only talking about freestanding houses, this report. And when you're talking about higher price point sales um, and also smaller markets in particular, you do get fluctuations in numbers. And this is a big reason why, if we go back to the methodology of this report, the reason why you want more volume as far as the actual sales is you need to get a bigger sample size to really understand what's going on. In markets at a higher price, you can see prices that can sell properties that are really, really, really expensive or bigger blocks in areas because there's essentially developable land and that can throw out your averages and your data and hence why we don't invest in data in isolation. But to your point, Phil, is Flemington potentially a market that's going to turn a corner quickly in the next 12 months? In my opinion, no. But is it a market that may be on more of the, uh, hey, it could be getting cheap and if you're looking for a blue chip market to get into, yeah, you, look, it could be correct it, timing. It could suit your investment strategy at the moment. Um, yep. But then, you know, I look at some of the other suburbs here and just to try and group them to give us some um, some commonalities, uh, I see Bankstown in the list. I see uh, there's some other similar type of places. I see Auburn. Mm. I see St Mary's. Yep. I see uh, South Penrith. Yep. Um, I used to work at Wo World for Kids. Yeah, yeah, right, at Penrith. <laughs> Um, for kids. Well, for kids, a toy store. Well, so Uncle my, Pete's toys are magic. One of us. You work at Uncle Pete's? <laughs> no, no, I didn't, but I do remember Uncle Pete's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he uh, was out of Blacktown there. He I was. That was his uh, ridge. And he's, he did. Yeah. Oh, gee. So, uh, Fairfield. Yeah. Uh, so, place like this, and and any given day, those suburbs, they're probably going to be all right. If yeah. you get, if you have, if you have the dough to get into those markets yeah. now, like we used to buy in those places a about to decade say, ago. Tell, tell me what the average annual there for the last 10 years is, Phil. I can probably bet my bottom dollar it's going to be in the 6, 7, 8% which, average which, annual which one? growth. Any of them. Pick Fairfield for me. St. Mary's. Give me St. Mary's. All right, St. Mary's. Here we go. Um, average annual 10-year growth. Well, St. Mary's is now it's getting a new train line. They're redeveloping the high street. Yep. There's going to be direct access to Badger East Creek. There's yep. a lot of reasons why St. Mary's should be doing oh, yeah. well. Uh, nearly a hundred properties sold. Yep. Um, one of them, volume. one of them would have been the ones that I, I sold. Uh, <laughs> Money bags. <laughs> flush with cash now. <laughs> went down and uh, <laughs> went down to St Mary's Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> blow, blow your dough. Put 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 five hundred through the pokies. No worries. Made another thousand. <laughs> we do not condone. Gambling. No, we do not gamble. It's bad for you. Um, one point nine percent is the uh, three month. Yep. Uh, nine point five percent is the uh, twelve month. Is the average annual? Average annual for ten years. So there you go. So that's essentially for everyone listening. If you've got average annual of nine point whatever percent, uh, you're getting more than a doubling over a decade. Yeah, and yeah. which is what happened to my property exactly out, out there in uh, St Mary's now. Yeah. 
And, and, and you could pluck Fairfield, South Penrith, Bankstown. You could group all those, and I could almost, I mean, we don't we'll go through it now, but you could go and have a look through this report. You download it yourself. You will be able to grab a lot of this data in that report um, if you wanted to go and have a look. And you could jump onto, I'm pretty sure Smart Property Investment have their own ability to put in suburbs, and you can grab a lot of yeah, this yeah, information you just, too. Yeah, so, you plug all this data in, you get yeah. it. But here's the interesting point. So 1.9, three-month, uh, 9.5, average annual growth, 10 years. Fantastic. 12 month growth. Yep. Negative 5.8. Yeah, there you go. And 2.9% rental yield, average price of 400 yeah. or something grand. And again, going back to you know, what, what made the cut and what didn't, that's why we're not looking at the last 10 years necessarily. We're looking, we're looking at the propensity for what's going to happen over the next 12, 24 months. And this is where to invest for the best results in 2025. Now, if you're seeing this data and you're looking at a market that's gone backwards circa, Five percent. A couple of interesting gr grass, well, I guess, green shoots that you noted there. Though the quarterly growth is positive, so yeah. maybe it found its bottom sort of earlier last year and has now started this growth cycle. It could well rebound quite comfortably. So, so what do you do about that tactically? Right, you go well. You you might be buying at a discount right now, but mm. if it's grown at at nearly what was it ten percent a year every year for the last yeah. ten years, and it's and it's and it's got positivity on the three three month growth. Well. Yeah, yeah. You, is, you, get, is, you make yeah. a full decision, but then you. But and the point there is saying, okay, is this happening in isolation in St Mary's, yeah. or is the same dynamic supply exactly. in similar areas? And I and I bring up here South South Penrith, um, great place. Yeah, South but Penrith. very similar. You know, you're only talking 15 minutes down the road, right? And it's straight up the Great yeah. Western Highway and turn right and sort of Correct. head, head turn yeah. left, and turn then, left, uh, and you're there, and you're yeah. there. Uh, yeah. Quarterly is 1.2, very similar. Uh, average annual 8.2, very similar. Uh, and the 12-month growth, negative 3.4. It's, it's just identical. And uh, and this is such an, a, an important point, Phil, because I think anyone who's looking at this top 50 report, and if you look at it and think, I have to buy, or, or you've made your mind up and say, I want to buy, let's say hypothetically, and I'm not going to say you should, but let's say half these markets are in WA right now, right, for this Fast 50 report for the 2025. Yeah. Obviously, Perth itself has thousands of suburbs, so the reality is here is that if you're trying to find a property in one of 26 suburbs that are in this report, potentially, you might then all of a sudden be competing with a lot of people. But I guess the point we're making here is that St Mary's and, and South Penrith, if you bought in either of those two markets a decade ago and you sold like you did last year, Phil, you're a happy camper. There yeah. is a lot of markets in Perth right now, which are neighbouring, maybe even three or four suburbs away from some of these key suburbs, which have been isolated. The chances are, if they've got relatively similar dynamics, no available supply, still got some of those arterial connections, schools, hospitals, rail, et cetera, you can be pretty confident that whatever results some of these top 50 markets are going to get, that those neighbouring suburbs are going to get something very similar. <clears throat> so it doesn't always work out, though. So Taylor, two cities, you look yep. at Penrith and then uh, South Penrith and, and St Mary's there, which are within striking distance of each other. I think it's, St Mary's is part of the Penrith Council as of South Penrith, I think. I don't think St Mary's is part of the Blacktown Council. No, no, I think no it's, it's so, not. It's so not. same council. But let's have a look at similar dynamics, um, different price points uh, in another part of the city, more southwest. Mm. Lakemba and Bankstown, right? Yep. Uh, again, probably the same distance away from each other. Yep. Uh, Ten the, minutes. Lakemba is sort of a bit closer to town, you know, uh, but very similar dynamics, train stations, all the usual the usual stuff. Yep. Uh, Bankstown being bigger, right? So Lakemba, 80, uh, 63 properties sold. So quarterly growth, negative 3.4. Mm -hmm. uh, average annual, 7.8. And annual growth, negative 2.3, right? Yep. Bankstown, great place. Uh, 128 properties sold. Average, that's a quarterly growth, 3.8% positive. Average annual, 8.6. And Annual growth eight point three. Yep. So, so I would say there that maybe Bankstown, and this is a, a, a generalisation, obviously, is about nine months ahead of Lakemba in terms of where it is in very, a cycle. Yeah, very potentially. But I guess yeah. when we talk about which we've talked about plenty of times over is is mean reversion. Again, mm. going back to those longer term numbers, Phil. You know, you can you can time it. And you might get a better twelve month uplift if you time it in that market better. And hence why this report is trying to find which markets are more prone and prime to give us quicker uplift. If you do hold, you can iron out a few of those creases over the long term, and that probably shows that, you know, Lakemba, Bankstown, St Mary's, South Penrith, Fairfield, a number of those other markets that were in this list but didn't make the top 50, their long-term numbers are relatively similar. 
hot tip, and we talked about this, I think might have been the first or second podcast in this um, Fast 50 report, Phil, is that if, if anyone jumps onto the CoreLogic site, you'll probably see that there's a report that came out very recently talking about we are now at the greatest divergence in value of apartments versus houses in Sydney specifically um, that this country has ever seen. So if we look at a couple of those markets you just mentioned, Phil, Bankstown and Lakemba, they're hot tip. They're not in the Fast 50 report and they're not houses. But if you go and have a quick look under the hood right now as to the price and value of a freestanding house in those markets versus a two-bedroom walk-up apartment, you might be uh, pleasantly surprised or shocked mm. at the difference and also the yield and propensity for growth and value. So don't just think in isolation that it's only houses as well. I know we talk about regional versus metro. We also talk about houses versus uh, apartments. And now this report is specifically focusing on houses because mm. we have to sort of refine it down to a particular cohort. But those markets in particular, there's some really interesting data that's coming out. So right you're now. saying that maybe have a look at ha- uh, look at units in those areas. Well, there's I, a lot of there's a lot of units in Banksound. There's, there's a lot of units in Lakemba. There's a lot of units in some of those surrounding areas yeah. like Wiley Park and, and all those other areas too. But if you look at them fundamentally, they're 15 minutes from the city. They're on a train line extension. That's got a huge change to the LEP as far as where zoning is going to go. And you've got no supply. Mm. And, and you look at vacancy rates and they're on an absolute downward spiral at the moment and you look at rents are increasing exponentially and you can't build apartments very quickly and they're not going to happen very soon either. You might see that, well, hey, with, some, with an overlay towards migration and where, yeah. where new migrants will come and live. And the average house price in the, all of those suburbs you just mentioned is mm. expensive. Yeah. The, the ho- average house yeah. price mm. is expensive. What's a house in, in Lakemba, Phil? I assume it's going to be closer to a million than it is 500,000. Oh, well, 1.3 in Bankstown yep. and uh, Lakemba... Uh, which I've lost really quickly was 1.1 1. 1 by memory. There you go, 1.1 1. 1 million dollars. 1106. So you have a quick anyone who's listening, jump on realestate.com quickly and go and look at what a two bedroom apartment might cost you, and you might be surprised. I reckon you're in for 450, 500 for a two bedder. In some cases, there, less. In, in some cases, yeah. less, Phil. Uh, and and this goes back to. You know, so you're going to say that that divergence will close? It has to. Yeah. And, and this is the point here is that yeah, you know, people these these are areas that are highly densified. There's a lot of jobs. There's densified. A lot of education. Densified, maximised. It is now. We is make it? up a lot of words okay, on this. Fine, yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, it comes down to the fact that these are the gaps that will start to close mm. because people in these areas, and and especially in these areas which potentially are led by a lot of families and and different ethnicities that want to stay close to each other, they might say, "Well, I'm not prepared to move out 30 minutes out west mm. because I want to stay close to family, friends, jobs, whatever it looks like." They end up going into this process where they say, "I've got to buy my first home here." And and that's an important point. It's talking about how the data may give you clues, but you've got mm. to get out of there and have a look around. So, so if you go out to Lakemba and Bankstown, um, uh, which is which is home for a lot of migrants from the Middle East. Yep. It's just, it's just and it's been that way now for probably 30 years. Since we've grown up. Yeah, 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 yeah um, definitely. Um, so huge Middle Eastern communities out there. Yep. You walk the streets of Lakemba. Um, and uh, you have Definitely a lot the of best shawarma in, in Sydney. Mate, great shawarma, some great Lebanese bakeries out yeah, there, absolutely. like Granville in um, uh, which yep. is closer to Para. Um, big Middle Eastern communities. Uh, then you look at other areas in and around that way, like Liverpool or Cabramatta. Yep. You know, you have um, uh, large Vietnamese. communities from from yep. Southeast Asia. Yep. Um, you go out through Tungabi, Seven Hills, uh, Blacktown area. Now you have big communities from from South Asia, so yep. uh, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka. Uh, you go out sort of a little bit west, Blacktown a little bit west, you have big Filipino communities, yep. right? Um, so this is how it all works. And, yeah. and we're a nation of migrants, right? And and, and traditionally migrants, you, you go to Bondi, there's heaps of Irish, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, they can't afford out there because they spend all their money exactly. on beer. Better. Yeah, you can't get in a pub, <laughs> can't get into a rental. But these are the local dynamics you need to understand. Now, um, and, and let's use Bankstown or Lakemba as an example. Um, when, when, when you look at, what drives migration? Uh, the Middle East right now is is probably going to be sparking a lot more migration because 100%. of conflict there. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, this 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 is not a podcast about that, but but when migrants come to Australia, whether it's Sydney, Melbourne, it's normally where they where where they, they where they start. Well, over fifty percent start. Yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to go. Where is my community? Where is my family? It's in Lakemba or Bankstown. I need somewhere to live. Wow, I can't afford. A one point three million dollar house in in Bankstown, or I can't afford one point one million dollars uh, in Lakemba. I will rent somewhere, mm. and I will probably rent a unit. You know, some that's very... how it starts, right? And, and, and you know, I've got great affinity with with the mid- Middle Eastern community here in, in Australia, and you see these dynamics playing out. You know, yeah. and and this is the, the the story of 
the migrant story in Australia. You saw it in Cabramatta in the eighties. Um, yeah. uh, now it's 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 and one of the great things um, uh, about Sydney, for example, but you see the same in, in in other nationalities. You don't need to leave Australia to get a cultural experience somewhere Not else. At all. Go to Lakemba one night on a Friday or Saturday night, yeah, especially around it's, this time it's, of it's Ramadan like, and Eid mate, coming it's, up. It's, 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 it's like yeah. being downtown Beirut, yep. right? You know, you you go to Cabramatta. You know, it's 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 like being Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City, right? Like it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think to. The really interesting data if you sort of say, well, what does that mean if you've got a huge amount of migrants coming in at a period of time? Um, there's some interesting ABS data that's come out recently talking about, well, what happens to these people when they come and they rent? Because the first port of call is they, they find a home, then they typically will find well, might find a job, they might stay with friends and family, then they find a home. Now, that home typically is going to be close, if not where they end up landing first and foremost. So at the moment, you know, we're talking about this fast 50 report, majority of these markets are going to be outside of Sydney and Melbourne. And I'm not suggesting that Sydney and Melbourne are going to feature next year. But if you've got 50% of these people arriving and you've got over 600,000 people last year arrived and it's going to be similar this year, et cetera, about seven out of 10 or 70% of the migrants who land where they first live buy a house within 10 years mm. in that same area. So when you start to think, well, how does this then extrapolate over to density and supply and demand? Well, you start to think, okay, well, ultimately what happens is, and unless things change as far as where people work, live, and they want to live, and they want to essentially raise their families, you're going to see that play out again. And you talked about places like Bankstown, places like Cabramatta. Every city, major city in Australia has very similar dynamics where the, those types of populations start growing. And all of a sudden you've got the second generation, third generation. If we look back, Phil, you know, you go back 30, 40 years when we we're growing up in similar areas in Western Southwest Sydney, those people who landed, typically who were renting, they actually un invariably became some of the wealthiest property oh, owners yeah, in Australia for doing nothing other than staying where they are, working, and essentially buying a plot of land and owning it and holding it. And mm. and that's that's the simplicity of property over the long term. But you'll find that that will likely play out time and time again. When you look at some of these suburbs that didn't make the Fast 50, and we're just using examples here, but this is how do you start overlaying... Um, the realities uh, and, and, and the fundamentals of these suburbs with, with data overlays. Let, let's stay with Bankstown and, and Lakemba because they're, they're two of these suburbs that didn't make – listen, I'll take your point around the investability potentially, uh, where to put your money today for the best capital growth next year. Maybe it is in, in some of these if, – if apartments are undervalued for the purpose of the disparity with, with housing – worth looking at. But if I think about, again, this is the overlay of, of understanding – the attractiveness of a suburb, you're talking about different cultures um, and some of the cultures we spoke about there or, or or the communities, Middle Eastern communities and or Vietnamese communities or South Asian communities, they have they have generational, they have three generations living in one house. Yes. So so you would have kids, the parents, uh, the grandparents and sometimes even great-grandparents. Mm. You often have maybe four generations living yep. in a house. And that's cool. That's 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 the way in which they, they, they their communities operate. So. Yep. You need to start looking at not only, say, unit stock, but if I was buying in these areas as a property investor, yes, there's going to be families that want three or four-bedroom brick homes. There's going to be other ones that want seven bedrooms, right? Yeah. And there's some big places out there. Yep. I, I think of someone we know in in George's Hall, yeah. um, which is near Yaguna, which is near, near Bankstown. Um, near Bankstown. Yep. Massive house. Like you, you can, you can, you'd have three generations of family in yep. there, right? And and these are attractive. Yeah. These Big are attractive. Old brick and, house that's not going to ever fall over. No. Yeah. No. So so this is when you when you really got to dig down to be a really smart property investor, a you know, smart property investment show. You got to get down to this the, these dynamics. But yeah, you know, we spoke a lot about Sydney, but the, the same application here. Villawood is another one that's just down yep. down the road from Fairfield. from from um, Fairfield. There's lots of them like it. And, you know, anywhere that you've, you've got these suburbs coming through, but then I look at a place like Wollongong, right? 2.2% uh, a quarterly growth, 10.10% uh, average annual and negative 16.10 annual growth. Mm. So it's gone backwards 16%. And that it's falls a into moment what in time. we talked about in the previous episode too. There was some regional markets there a little bit further south of Wollongong, Jaroa, Jeringong, that had a really bad 2023 and 2022 because there was a lot of – you know, essentially sea changes that came out of there thinking I'll get a better life and don't have to work in the major cities to have their six-figure, multi-six-figure job yeah. in their corporates. But um, that's changed a bit. But, yeah, timing. But then you look at places uh, go a bit more regional, um, Mount Gambier in South Australia, that's yep. sort of southeast area, yep. and then Wagga Wagga. Um, whether or not you could say those two things, are, they're, they're, those two suburbs are similar, sort of, mm. um, 
Uh, let's look at the numbers for, for Mount Gambia. 2.9% uh, quarterly growth, 6% average annual, and 12-month growth, 86 so already in a cycle. Wagga, Wagga, I'm allowed to call it Wagga, aren't yep. I? Uh, it's incorrect, but you can do it. Wagga, Wagga. So <laughs> 434 properties sold in Mount Gambia. Yeah. You know, that's that's it's significant. Uh, 113 in Wagga, Wagga. Yep. And Wagga, Wagga, again, has more affluent areas and more Definitely. sort of lower yep. socioeconomic areas. 2.3% uh, quarterly growth, 7.4%. Average annual and thirteen percent um, uh, one year growth. Mm. That's pretty good going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Pretty good going, and there's just many, many, many other suburbs here. Warner, let's uh, let me just do. A, I'll do a quick sort, and I'll see what the uh, state um, makeup of is the best of the rest, if we want to call it that. Uh, I'm just working out which column uh, it would be. Column F. That's cool. All the data's there. Only I get to do this with the data, though. Uh, you've got to download the report, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. That's column G. I'm going to go to column F here. Uh, REB Awards today, Paul. Nice little wedge. Yeah, you like that. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. I've got it on my shirt <laughs> <laughs> while I'm... Um, you what, might what, have to do a little bit more than that to spruce yourself up. Pure reckon? Property Investment won't be taking part today, but um, we've... But, but you've already won by Asia of the we Year. Have, we just, have, we and have. And you're still trading off that, we still, We still we trade off, <laughs> off that, that, but among other rewards that we've won over the years. But some so you've held your bat up, you've gone, that's it, but now, now you let the other... If I'm honest, new, there's a few others who I, I, I share some, um, some, some war stories with a few other really good operators in the space, and we've probably all taken a relatively similar sentiment that you know, there's a time and a place for award ceremonies. And I think um, there's a few newcomers who I think it's their time to to get out there and beat the drum, but it's good for the industry in general. It's really good for the industry. And, and we like to see, and, and obviously Smart Product Investment, we've, I'd like to think championed uh, um, the, the, the growth of the buyer's Definitely. agent sector uh, for, for the only reason that I want Australians to get better outcome property is that that doesn't say all buyer's agents are as good as each other. No. You know, we spoke about it. it's, it's, it's unregulated industry. Mm -hmm. um, there is good operators and there's a code of conduct. I know people operate who are members of PIPA. Um, but it's not a given that the buyer's agent you choose is the right buyer's agent. No. So, you know, this is why if we can use a report like the Fast 50 to give you some sense for, you go and do it yourself, that's cool. Um, I, I buy property by myself. Sometimes you buy as agents, it's, it's all right. Um, but this is, should be part of your makeup uh, of um, how you go about making decisions. Now, the, the point, Paul, is... Uh, of the best of the rest, as in those suburbs that didn't make the list, but are still, as we've gone through, some of them are performing well. One in the ACT, Woden. 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 Yep. Um, 17 are in New South Wales. Sorry. And this is out of, so I'll work out quick percentages. So the best of the rest, there was 90, right? Yep. Uh, so one, one in ACT, so about one and a bit percent. Yep. Um, 17 in New South Wales, so 20 percent. Uh, Queensland, uh, strong 25. Yep. And and there's some suburbs here that made the list last year, I believe, like uh, Norman Gardens, yep. uh, by memory, Narang. Yep. Um, there's a new one here, I don't know, but Brush, Brushland Beach. Do you know where that is? No, no, Nor idea. northern Queensland, uh, Kelso. Yep. Um, where else? Davenport, Strathpine, I think, made the list last yep, year. Strathpine, good um, long-term performing market. Then there. you've got places of Sunshine Coast, Coolum Beach. Yep. I know you were buying up there for someone that I know. He's done yep. pretty well out of that. We've done, definitely bought our fair share up there. I know. Rocky. Yep. Bald Hills. Um, these are all Brizzy. Yeah. Albany Creek, Woodham, Cherbourg. So that was 35 out of the 90. And Queensland, well represented. Uh, five in South Australia. Uh, Northfield, I think they made the list last year. Tassie, uh, Riverside, East Davenport, um, Moon, Moona, Moona, you know it? Yep, Moona. Well, I actually where, spoke to someone that's from... Where, um, that's where Mona is. Mona. I was yeah. where the Mona is. Yeah, well, it's yeah. not far from it. So, yeah, yeah I spoke to um, Melissa Burt, uh, LJ Hooker, uh, Davenport, just the other day on the Smart Property Investment Show, telling me all about what's going on there. Yeah. Sounds all right. 
It's a, it's a it's a bustling little market, Davenport. We've definitely bought our fair share there. I can't personally suggest that I would uh, be be recommending my clients are plowing their money into there. If anything, I've got a few clients who have um, gone through the process of selling some properties which have doubled in value. And, and in the that, last that's what she years. said. There's a lot of investors now who they've, uh, they've done their done their job. Qu- quarterly growth is negative three percent. Average yep. annual nine point one. And uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, average annual and the last twelve months three percent. Yeah. So it's and again, it's about it. timing it. So if yeah. you did the the Fast Fifty report twenty fourteen, we probably yeah. would have been talking yeah. about that as a place I can, to I can, buy. I can unequivocally say that in between twenty fifteen and twenty eighteen, we bought probably the best part of five hundred properties between Devonport, Burnie, Hobart, Launceston in that time. Yeah. Um, and I know pretty much every single one of them that were bought prior to that have probably got, come pretty close, if not more than doubled in value. But time is probably. It's close to maybe consider taking some stock. Yeah, and there again, let's say use a report like this. We'll chat about that tomorrow when we get together. And uh, so, sorry, in Victoria, there was 14. Um, Williams Landing, Knoxfield, Caroline Springs, Faulkner, Point Cook. Yeah, out of all these here, one, so what are the 14 in in Melbourne? Uh, Bald, Baldwin, I've heard of before. Baldwin's, yeah. Definitely Melbourne Point market. Cook, I've heard of before, is a sort of tra- Air Force training base there, and Flemington. That, I've never heard of any of those other suburbs. Right, gotcha. Well, you are you are a Sydney sider at heart, Phil, and you're oh, probably no, but losing, this is the problem, right? losing the pe- face with pe- a lot of Melbournians. No, nah, but people think, they go, oh, Phil, you know all about property. Where should I invest? They go, oh, I've yeah. never heard of these places. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> ask Paul Glossop. He yeah, knows. Yeah, he does exactly. it for a living. I'm not well, telling you where to invest. That's why I'm here. That's, yeah, that's why, why I'm here, to, to give some sense to the sensibility. Uh, and then I look at uh, WA, for example, High High Wickham. Yep. Did I get that right? Good. Didn't say Wycombe. A lot Wycombe, of people say Wycombe. Wycombe. High Wycombe. Canning Vale. Yep. Um, Queens Park, I know of. Yep. Craigie. Craggy. Yep. yep. Craigie. Uh, Burnbury. Uh, Bunbury. Bunbury. Yep. Bunbury. Yeah. Yep. Spearwood. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's you the go. best of the rest. Best of the rest. Should I do some averages? Just, just we'll round out with some averages. It'd be interesting. I think let's round out, round out with maybe. I know we talked about the last episode, the the top fifty, and and yeah. essentially saying that the average annual growth. And this isn't to suggest that these numbers will will essentially correlate to saying that best of the rest should be lower or higher. It's just be interesting to say, hey, look, they don't necessarily show that they are better or worse. But I know we talked about the average annual growth for the fast fifty, the top fifty out of the fast fifty for this year. Uh, was essentially in the vicinity of around about 4.8-ish percent average annual growth over the past 10 years. And I think we averaged about 11% over the last year. So let's see what the best of the rest might well okay. be. Okay, average annual growth? Yep. I reckon it'll be higher. Let me put it out there. I reckon it'll be higher. 5.5%. There you go. Look at it. And and the reason being, everyone is listening, and, and the reason why probably I made that assumption is that you said, Phil, you know, out of the fast 50 over twenty, uh, over fifty percent are in WA and a larger portion are in Brisbane. That's um, the best of the rest, large portion in Victoria and New South Wales, as well as the, as we just mentioned, there was a number in, in Tassie. <clears throat> All those markets did really well, and hence why that average annual is probably a bit higher. Okay, so best of the rest. So the for the fast 50, 12 month growth. Yep. Right. What what, what do you remember that number? Eleven ish percent. Yeah, eleven point zero four. There you go. What do you reckon it is? For the best of the rest, uh, the for the last twelve months worth of growth, yeah, I reckon theoretically it would probably be in the vicinity of potentially four to eight percent. No, lower. Yeah, there you go. One percent. There you go. And uh, obviously uh, skewed with outliers like Flemington, negative twenty one. Yeah. Um, but you see, yeah, you mentioned that places like you know the Tassie markets, a lot of the New South Wales markets would have been negative. Some of the Victorian markets would yep, have been negative as yep, well. Yep, yep. So uh, Moon are there negative yep. thirteen. There you go. Uh, other places here with substantial uh, sixteen negative sixteen the gong yep so that's that's weighed that right down so 100%. you can start to see how look these are good investable suburbs however right there now. might be a different sort of story yeah. behind it and the average quarterly growth it's a really in- interesting way to do it is this is the last quarter the last this is the last quarter yeah. yeah less than a percent yeah and and you know that compares to I think when we talked about the fast fifty the average or the previous highest quarter growth of the last quarter so the average of that was I think was circa three percent from memory yeah. was it uh, yeah thereabouts I think yeah um, here's it's, one it's, for you the average yield of the best of the rest it would be much lower much higher price point markets a much lower yield I would suggest you're probably in the vicinity of three percent maybe. 
three point eight. Yes. Uh, versus the fast fifty, Phil. Yeah. What do you What do you got for oh, me? I'm gonna Here say we go. Let's see how good 50, he is. I reckon it's going to be in the f- five, anywhere between high fours to early fives. Four point nine eight. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> Bam. All right. Median. The average median rent then for the fast fifty. Uh, median average rent for the fast fifty. Average. The average of the median rent. So all the so median dollar rents value, average. not yield. Yeah, yeah. Dollar value. Um, yeah. uh, knowing the price points, I think it's going to be somewhere in that probably, probably around that five to six hundred a week. Five hundred and twenty bucks. Ah. <laughs> Best of the rest. It'll be more. I reckon the seven hundreds or eight hundreds. Actually, depending. Mm, yeah, it's hard because I don't necessarily know. Well, there's still some Perth properties in there. Oh, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's probably it's... still in the, the maybe the five to six hundred range. Yeah. 556 bucks. Yep. All right. What about, here we go, the median price point for the suburb. So the average of the median. So this is saying one suburb might be 100 a million. Yep. Next one might be 500 so the median. So for the fast so 50? For the fast 50. For the fast 50 is probably going to be, oh, geez, you really push me. I, I, I reckon I'm, I'm, I'm a lot of Perth and ad, I'm 100% ad, out of this so far, but I'm going to go. It'd be, I can't remember half are in Perth. Half are in Perth and the rest, it's probably going to be 600 grand. 612? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually looked at this? I have not. And anyone who's no. watching this, they can stare right at this live. And this is all on YouTube as well. So I'm yeah, not looking yeah. at anything. I'm staring in your eyes, Phil. All right. Uh, your, your dulcet tones. And I'm looking yeah, you through like that. you. like that. My baby blue eyes. <laughs> so maybe I've hypnotized you. Uh, what is it for the best of the rest? Uh, Here we go. This is uh, how good he is. I reckon it's going to be more. Oh, this is such a varied amount. 90 suburbs. The average out of 90 suburbs. Let's go. Uh, with... I'll, I'll give you I'll give you soon. I'll give you, I'll give you a bit of help. Yep. Uh Probably twenty five percent of them are over a million bucks. Yeah, and there's you don't even need to tell me the the numbers, yeah. Phil. Tell me this. Yeah, I reckon if majority were Queensland. Oh, sorry, they were Victoria and New South Wales, Queensland. I reckon you're going to be in the eight hundred to a million range somewhere in there. I know One, it's a bit of a so eight hundred and twenty six thousand dollars. There you go. So they, look, it's. Yeah, but I guess the common theme there is that the the fast fifty is a lower price point market. The fast fifty is growing quicker. The fast fifty is has a higher rental yield. The fast fifty has a lower average annual growth over the last ten years, but potentially more propensity for shorter period of growth because of the quarterly growth and because of what's happened in the last de- uh, sorry the last twelve months. So. Again, it goes back to what are we looking at and what are some of those key markers that we're looking at. And the beauty about this Fast 50 report and just out of those numbers there is that, again, we weren't asking people to say, give us your cheapest suburbs. They're just saying, give us your best suburbs for yep. growth. And we've noted there that majority of these in the Fast 50 are actually more affordable. So it gives more people a chance to get in. So the point is that there was no bias when we asked for these suburbs. No. We said to these experts, Zero. you tell us. Just Where? It was so simple. Yeah. Tell us what's going to grow the fastest. Give us 20 suburbs, fast growing suburbs, we'll according to you, data. and we'll work it out. Yep. So there you go. That's that's the dynamics of it all. But that's the best of the rest. So only we know those suburbs. And if we you've do. tuned to this podcast, you know of some of them. But uh, if anyone sure. wants to ask me some of those others, they can maybe hit would me you, up. Would you tell them? I'll, I'll give them some. Um, <laughs> I'm more than happy to divulge. <laughs> the Glen Gary leads. The, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, or you can probably get in touch with me for those things at purepropertyinvestment.com or give my team a call, one three hundred nine eight five four two eight. They can give you those lists, um, not me. I don't know. I'm going to make it available. Well, I've got it. I don't oh, have all of true. that information that you do, actually. I do. Yeah. This is it, man. Yeah. Information is you'll power. Em- you'll embargo the link and somehow block it from me to have a look at. But everyone get the Fast 50, though, can't they, Definitely. Paul? On smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Go and download it today. Be one of many, 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 many thousands of people. The problem is everyone's going, don't make it available to too many people. <laughs> we had this problem stop, last year. Stop them now. I, I'm not kidding now. you. Agents from WA last year called me and my office and said, mate, We've got a problem. What have you done? Well, well, unfortunately, supply Wait. was already historically low. Yeah. And, you, I mean, and, and the irony here is that majority of property is still selling to owner-occupiers. So this isn't like this list all of a sudden springs boards investors into markets, which they otherwise wouldn't have been. Over 75% of these markets are getting over purchase, well, the purchasing percentages are to owner-occupiers. So it's, still yeah. not, it's not really pushing these markets to a point where they're just investors. See, I'm hearing reports that, that Phil Tarrant and Smart Property Investment has done more for the economic advancement of WA than anyone else. I don't know if it's economic advancement. <laughs> because it's supporting property investment. <laughs> and property being, mate, they're going, Phil, get get the punters out in the WA. How many green senators have you had on, <laughs> on this podcast? Mate, uh, get more, get more investors out of Western Australia <laughs> because the more they come, they buy more properties yeah. and more, land more tax, tax paid. More land tax. More tax paid. I did, I did see today that um, in the paper that uh, 
uh, Victoria is copping a beat up of um, uh, mm -hmm. gouging property investors well, because that's are, how they're, they're deep in their land tax coffers. Yes, they you know? and, and, sorry, stamp, stamp duty coffers. Stamp duty coffers. Yeah. Land tax starts at dollar one. basically now. They've got a whole bunch of other requirements. Investors, unfortunately, are going to be left holding the bag, but supply is so going to drop what, off what because of What about land tax? Everyone pays land tax now? Or, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've got all these land tax bills. Yeah. Enjoy backdated that. Backdated. Enjoy like that. Like five years. And Enjoy I went, that. What, what's just Amazing. happened? Amazing. But I mean, this is the problem, right? Like, how does that... that... So, hang on a second. So what's happened down there? They've gone land tax now pay payable from 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 the start. But I'd think, look, as opposed to me knowing the detail, that I don't want to. We don't probably wanna, should do something. No, because I'm going to say things which are probably inaccurate. But mm. I think one thing I do know is that what it's done is is again further disincentivise investors to buy in a market that's undersupplied. Yep. So the issue you're going to have straight away, and this is where you've got Adam Bant and the Greens talking about the issue with rental supply. Tell me how that's going to help rental supply. Yeah, mate, you, you, you're singing to the choir. Well, yeah. Anyway. And everyone another, else is going, another yeah, podcast. yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, about, okay, so you've got all this data. What are you going to do with it? We're going to talk about that in our final instalment, number six of the Fast 50 special series of podcasts, six days of podcasting. That's about six hours of listening to us. Geez, some sad people around. <laughs> to do that. People, are, people are frothing for it, though. I'm getting feedback going, what's going on? They go, they, someone sent me a note the other day going, Phil, you made a typo. You called it 2025 or 2024. And I went, yeah. 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 You're not, not buying it, for now. I'm telling you, really, let's today for next yeah. year. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> Just relax, eh? <laughs> Just take it easy. Uh, Smartproperinvestment.com.au. You, you go there. You'll find it. You can't miss it. Download it today. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A, so if you want to know anything, uh, editor at smartproperinvestment.com.au, we can put all that together. But yeah, Paul's team, Paul, he'd be happy to chat if you've got any questions around this. Uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.